Hey there, internets. I'm Michael, and this is Two Can Play That Game, bringing you our video on how to play the Ravens of Fry Sahashri. And I hope I've pronounced that right. Um, I have been practicing an awful lot. So in this video, I'll be teaching you how to play this game, including all the setup and everything you should need to know. Um, if you're interested in seeing an example of this played or seeing my thoughts and opinions on this game, then you'll need to check out my other videos for that. So what is the Ravens of Fry Sahashri? Well, let's take a look at the cover here. So we have some beautiful anime artwork with feathers and cherry blossoms and a girl. So it's about a Japanese girl. Yes, it actually is about a Japanese girl, but much more than that. It's an asymmetrical cooperative deduction game. And the nature of it, the game is that one player is this Japanese girl whose name is Ren, and the other player is her friend called Fef, who is a little boy who is on the back cover here. And Fef has this ability where he is able to see into the minds of others, and Ren has just had a traumatic experience and has fallen into a coma, and her mind is breaking away and being devoured by these ravens. So the nature of the game is that you are trying to save Ren. You are working together in order to do this, but you're unable to communicate. So one player is sifting through all of Ren's memories, trying to build up the information that she needs in order to repair herself. But the only information you have is what you're doing with those cards. So I'm probably confusing matters here. So why don't we now take it to the table and I can teach you how to play the Ravens of Fry Sahashri. So let's talk a bit about the cards that come in this game, because this is a card game, it's made up of cards. So we have here the two character cards that represent the characters you can play in this, either Ren, who is the person whose mind is broken and you need to repair, or her friend, Beth, who is the psychic delving into her mind to fix it. The main cards in the game are these memory cards here. And you can see they come in numbers ranging from one to five, and also in five different colors. So you can see here, we have ones of each of the different colors. We've got our gold, green, red, blue and purple. Let's talk about the format of these memory cards. So you've got the numbers here and then the image in the middle is the memory itself that this card represents. And you have clear sections and these colored sections and the colored sections represent where the memory is faded. At the bottom of the card here, we have a special ability and I'll talk more about how those work and come into play later on in the video. The final type of card in this game is the Raven cards, and there is one for each of the different colors of memory cards. Let's start with how to set up the game. The first thing you're gonna to need to do is pick who will be playing which of the two characters. Once you've done that, you can put the character portrait for that character in front of the respective players. Then take all of your memory cards and shuffle them together, making sure you leave out the Raven cards. Once you've shuffled your cards, you'll deal one memory card face up into this middle area of your Atman. Next, deal four cards face down for Ren. This is Ren's heart. And I'll talk more about how these cards are used later on. It's important to note that Fef is not allowed to see these cards. However, Ren may look at them freely. Then take your Raven cards and shuffle these in with the rest of the memory cards. You now have your deck of cards and this gets given to Fef. 
Fef is the only player who will ever draw cards out of this deck. The game is now all set up, ready to play your first dream. A dream is a round of the game, and the game is made up of three dreams. There are important differences for the final dream, and I'll talk about those later on. Each dream will be made up of a series of player turns. So first, Feth will take his turn, then Ren takes her turn, then it goes back to Feth, then back to Ren. The dream will finish once Ren has completed all four of her poems and these colours of heart cards are the only colours represented here in the Atman and I'll explain that when we talk about the different turns in more detail. So let's start with explaining Feth's turn here. So the first thing Feth will do on his turn is draw cards from the deck into the memory row, which is this row here. And the cards coming out will always be either the normal memory cards or these raven cards. And Feth can continue to draw as many cards as he wants until he chooses to stop. It's important to note that when Feth is drawing these cards, however, that if at the beginning of Feth's turn there is no cards in the deck to draw, then you have lost the game. Also, if you end up with all five ravens in the raven row here, you will have lost the game. So you're trying to get the cards you need out of this deck, but without using too many cards so that you don't risk bringing the ravens out and also running out of cards. So once Feth has chosen to stop drawing, then any raven cards in the memory row would get moved to the raven row, filling from left to right. Then Feth needs to choose at least one of these memory cards in this memory row to add to the Atman. If Feth is unable to add a card to the Atman, then you have lost the game. However, he may add as many to the Atman as he wishes. So in our Atman here, we have this two card of gold that has clear memory here and faded memory on the right. The rules for adding a card to this Atman is that Feth can add whichever cards in whichever order from the memory row he wants to the Atman. And the aim of the cards that he is adding to the Atman here is to give Ren the card she needs to complete her heart. Now, obviously, he doesn't know what she needs for that but will gain information based on the card that she chooses to take each turn. But to begin with, the best thing to do is give Ren a selection of numbers and colours to choose from. Also, he is trying to relive Ren's memories. Reliving a memory means you have overlapping cards of the same colour that add up to seven. So here we have the two and the five making seven, which means we have relived this gold memory here. When you do this, you ask the Ren player if they have a gold heart card. If they do, they will flip it over. And that will mean at the end of that dream, you will gain that as a point card to help you in your final dream. And of course, also, that will help give you information as to what Ren needs to complete her hearts. Let's say that Feth added this red five to this red two, which relived this red memory. As well as revealing a red card from Ren's heart, it would also chase away this red raven. Any cards underneath it, such as this card here would then be given to your discard pile rather than be eaten by the raven at the end of the round. 
when you chase away the raven, simply put it to the side, and that means that it will not devour any more memories during this dream. However, it will come back at the end of the dream. When you're adding a card to the Atman as Feth, you must always ensure that one faded segment is overlapping with another faded segment. However, you can have it so that you overlap multiple segments. So here we have the two faded segments of memory on the two can overlap with these two faded segments on the five. We would not, however, be able to play this five over the two in this way because no faded segments overlap, although the clear segments do match. Also, you need to ensure that you have all the different types of segment matching. So here we have faded over faded, which is fine. However, we can't have clear underneath this faded, so the five cannot be placed there. For this example, we'll place the five there, which would, of course, relive this golden memory. Then we can choose to place another card. So let's say we're going to place this red one here with one section of faded memory. Now, we can't play it anywhere over this five because of the way it lines. We're not allowed to rotate the card at all. You must keep all the cards in the same orientation. Where we can play this is over this two card because we'd have faded over faded and clear over clear. It is possible for cards to be removed from the Atman by placing new cards. The way this would work is by covering a card completely. So let's say that we were playing this green two. Because it has two faded segments here and two clear, we can play it over the top of this two, completely covering it, and it overlays with the one and the five. So now that two does not exist, so it will not count as a card that Ren can take on her turn, and also it will not count as a colour of card for determining if the dream has been resolved. So we have one final card here, and the only place it could legally be placed is either here, 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 or here. We're going to choose to place it here. And the reason for that is I want to talk about an example where you can split this Atman so that the cards are no longer connected by overlaying other cards. So if I was to place this one over this five, which I can do because it's clear and faded, that then completely removes the card underneath. But you can see that means that there is no overlapping cards connecting this five to this one, or this five to this two, or this two to the one. So we now have three separate segments. So we have split this Atman. Whenever this would happen, the Ren player gets to choose a segment to keep. So here we have three different segments Ren could choose to keep. She could keep either this one, this five, or this one and two. The rest of the cards will get discarded. So in this situation, Ren's going to choose to keep this one and the two, which means we discard this one and five. And that then reveals the other five. Any he does not choose to add to the Atman would get discarded to the discard pile. So let's say he was not going to add these three here. These three cards would get discarded. However, any time you discard a memory card, which colour matches a raven in the raven row, rather than discarding these cards, you instead place them underneath the raven card. If, at the end of the dream, there are cards still under Ravens, they will get removed from the game. Which, of course, will then make it harder to get the cards you need for your later dreams. The next thing to talk about for Feth's turn is that, as well as these Ravens here eating memories when they're in your Raven row, they also create a safe zone in your memory row 
directly above where the raven is. So as we draw these cards, we would draw them and place them directly above your raven row so you can see how these line up with your safe zone. So here our safe zone was this single card projected by this red raven. What this means is that when we discard these cards, so let's say we were playing through and this yellow raven moves down here, because it's moved during this turn, this blue card still is not in a safe zone. We now do our discard. So the blue card is not in a safe zone, but there's no blue raven out, so it just gets discarded. However, this red card, discarding this, should go underneath this red raven. However, because it's in the red raven safe zone, it still gets put in your discards and not devoured by the raven. Also, if you have a situation like so, where dealing out the cards, you end up with a raven in your safe zone. Where this raven has been dealt into the safe zone, rather than be added to the raven row, instead this will get added to your discard pile the same as any other card. So you know you'll be safe from this raven until the next dream. So this green would also go to the discards, but this yellow here is not in a safe zone, so it would get devoured by the yellow raven. So the aim of the game for Fef was to provide cards for Ren to complete the dream and complete her poem. Her poem is made up of her four heart cards and what she is trying to do, and what I'll do is I will reveal these cards for you to make this clearer. So here we have the four heart cards that Ren has for this dream. And each dream you will have a different four cards. And um, what Ren needs to do is make the first three rows add up to seven. So the top card she has here is the first line she must complete. She needs to add memory cards to the left of this from the Atman to make this add up to seven. The fourth row here only has to add up to five rather than seven. So as well as trying to complete the dream and complete the poem, Ren is also trying to give Feth information based on the choices that she's making of what she has here. Because if Ren is able to relive the dreams for the cards that she has here, they will then become scorecards. If he doesn't, they will just get discarded. So if we looked at the Atman here, to complete this first poem, we would need a two. And on the top here, we have this green two card. So for Ren's turn, she will simply take this green two and she would add it to this poem. And of course, you would be playing with these face down. So let's flip this face down and assume this is what Fef would then be seeing. So Ren knows that the two plus the five is seven. She would then declare to Fef that the poem is complete and then she can start working on the next line of the poem. However, she can only take one card a turn. So having taken that card, it would be back round to Fef to add more cards to the Atman. And Fef adds this golden free to the Atman here. So it comes back round to Ren's turn and she's now trying to complete this second line poem where she has a four. So let's flip all of these back round just to give the impression of how it would actually play. So she knows she has a yellow four under here and she can complete her poem by taking this golden or yellow three and adding it to that poem. However, because the color of this golden three matches the color of her heart card, she must then reveal the heart card, flipping it over and turning it sideways. 
This now means that this card will not get added to the scoring at the end of the game. Only cards which get flipped over and revealed by Feth reliving Ren's memories will be added to Ren's score pile. Let's now talk about a situation where this purple card had been revealed due to Feth reliving a purple memory. And Ren already had this red one here. So currently this row is five. And it's now Ren's turn and she chooses to take from the Atman this gold two and add it to that poem. That now means this poem is complete. So she would advise Ren that the poem is complete. However, if you remember, this final card was a five and the final row, the fourth poem, only needs to add up to five. So this means that that one is also complete. So at this time, Ren would also advise Feth that actually the whole poem is complete, not just that one. Obviously, if this had been a lower number, she would not be advising that the final one is complete. You would just continue play until it is. So in this situation here, all lines of the poem have been completed, but the dream would not necessarily be over. It would only be over if all the cards in the Atman, and that is of course only the visible cards, are of colours represented in Ren's heart here. Now you wouldn't reveal the cards for Feth to see, Ren would simply say that the dream is not over. So let's assume that these were the visible cards. So we've got a red and a gold. So Ren would say the dream is not over. However, as soon as the cards in the Atman do match the colours, so let's assume that Feth added one more card on his turn and he added this blue one to the Atman. So the blue and the yellow are present in Ren's heart, but the red is not. So what Ren can do on her turn is despite the fact that she has completed her poem, she must still take one card and she can take the red five and that would then get discarded following the normal rules of discarded of going to the Raven. At which point, we would choose one of these to keep and the other to discard because we have split the Atman in the same way I discussed for Feth's turn. Now that all the colours match, Rem would be able to declare the end of the dream. Before I discuss how to set up for the next dream, I just want to talk about a situation such as this, where Ren is working on completing this top poem and she has a five there. So she can only add ones or twos to this poem because it needs to be exactly seven. She can't go over that. But let's imagine that all we had in the Atman was these two fives and a three. She has to take a card on her turn, but none of these cards can be added to that poem. What this would mean is she would pick a card and that card would get discarded. I have not yet mentioned how you use the special powers on all of these memory cards. Now, the way you can use these is you can only use them once the card is in a poem. So after Ren has added the card to a poem, you may use the power at any time simply by turning that card sideways within that poem. It's important to note that Feth may use any of the different colours of special powers, but Ren may only use the red and gold special abilities when she is doing her turn. To set up for the new memory, you will add any cards that were revealed by Feth reliving memories 
to Ren's score path. So let's say this blue one was from Reliving a Memory. That will get added to Ren's score pile. Any other cards on the table will go to your discards. And of course that means that the memories will be eaten by ravens if there is a raven in the raven row of the matching colour. Then once you've discarded those cards, any ravens that were chased away as the result of reliving a memory will be added back to your raven row for your following dream. Then shuffle up your deck of dream cards and your discards all together to form a new deck. You'll then deal one card randomly to be the start of your Atman. And if this comes out as a raven, you'll simply shuffle it back into the deck. You will then also deal out four new cards face down to be Ren's heart. And Ren will need to check these cards to make sure that none of them are ravens. If there is a raven, then it will get added back to the deck. You'll shuffle the deck and deal a new card. Then you proceed with play for your second dream as you did for your first dream. And once you've finished your second dream, you'll then do a final third dream. Now, there are some important rule changes for the third dream. For starters, on each of Ren's turns here, she must complete one row of her poem. However, to help her do this, she may add any of the cards from her score pile to a row of the poem she is working on at that time. So if all she had to take was this one and she had a one there, she could add this one to her poem as the card she's taking from the Atman, but she could also add this five from her score pile to mean that she did complete that poem and made seven. If she is unable to complete a line of her poem each turn, then you lose the game. Also, the final change to the rules comes with when you complete the final poem in this dream, your fourth one. At this time, if the colours in the Atman do not match to your heart, you have lost the game. If they match, you have won. And that is how you play the Ravens of Fry Sahashri. I do hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please do check out the rest of the videos on the channel, subscribe to the channel and share the channel with your friends and family, as well as checking us out on social media. You can find us on Facebook and also on Twitter. And as always, thanks for watching and bye for now.